This week, we've got something special for you. This is the first video in a series that we're putting together to show you how to build your own home automation system. Using the open source software OpenHab, we'll be building a Raspberry Pi touchscreen command center that can interface with over 150 different smart home products and provides an interface for control and task scheduling. Instead of using an existing product though, we'll build our own wirelessly controlled RGB LED strip that interfaces with OpenHab. That allows you to control it from any smartphone or computer on your network. OpenHab is great because it interfaces with so many products. It's free, it's open source, and it's incredibly versatile. It also runs on Windows, OS X, and Linux, so you don't necessarily have to use a Raspberry Pi for this project. If you have an old laptop or desktop kicking around, you can just as easily run the same setup. We also want to thank Arrow for sponsoring this build. They've given us access to their vast inventory of electronic components in order to make this project series possible. We're really excited to share what we've come up with. The main parts for this build are a Raspberry Pi and touchscreen, as well as the components used to control the NeoPixel strip. You can purchase the components from Arrow or other online electronics vendors. You'll also need a few tools for soldering and programming the microcontroller. Begin by assembling the Raspberry Pi touchscreen and mounting it to the Pi. Then download the latest build of Raspbian from the Raspberry Pi website and flash it onto an SD card. Plug in a keyboard and Wi-Fi adapter, then insert the card into the Pi and boot it up. Go through the configuration process for your setup. In order to get the touchscreen to work, you'll likely need to run a few commands in the command line to update Raspbian. After the update, restarting the Pi will flip the screen upside down. If that's a bother to you, you can flip it back by adding the line LCD underscore rotate equals 2 to the config.txt file in the boot folder. Now it's time to install our home automation control software, OpenHab, and the associated OpenHab add-ons we'll be using. This gets a little command line heavy, so for a full list of commands, click on the link to the project instructions in the description below. Since the communication between our OpenHab server and our lights will occur over a messaging protocol called MQTT, we'll need to install Mosquito, an MQTT broker. Finally, download our pre-made OpenHab configuration files and install them in the associated OpenHab folders. With OpenHab set up on a Raspberry Pi, it's time to switch to building our NeoPixel strip controller. The cheap Wi-Fi enabled Adafruit ESP8266 Huzzah board is perfect for this. But because it uses 3.3 volt logic level instead of the NeoPixel strip's 5 volts, we'll need to solder a logic level converter between them. Before we start that though, solder the provided header pins to the board so we can program it using an FTDI adapter. Now, on the low level side of the converter, pin 2 from the ESP will connect to A1, pin 3 to LV, and ground to ground. On the high side of the converter, pin B1 is soldered to the NeoPixel data pin wire, that's the striped wire on the NeoPixel connector, and ground will go to ground. Solder a red wire to the HV pin on the converter, and another red wire to the V plus on the ESP. The male end of the NeoPixel strip will also provide power for the ESP, so solder the red wire from the strip to the red wires coming from the V plus and HV pins, and the black wire goes to the ground on the ESP. After that, plug the NeoPixel strip into the wall with the provided cord, and make sure that the ESP is getting power by hitting the reset button to see if the onboard LED flashes. With everything wired up, it's time to flash the ESP using the Arduino IDE. Take a moment to install the boards and libraries by following the links in the description, and then open the provided Arduino sketch. Then edit the sketch to include your Wi-Fi network settings and the Pi's IP address. You can check your Pi's IP address by typing IP space ADDR space show into the command line. Connect your computer to the ESP with an FTDI cable and set your board and port in the Arduino IDE. Put the ESP into programming mode by holding the GPIO0 button down and pressing the reset button. Then upload your code. After it's flashed, open the serial monitor and make sure that the board connects to your Wi-Fi network successfully. With OpenHab configured and our NeoPixel strip on the network, it's time to test it out. Download the OpenHab app to your phone or tablet. It's available for both Android and iOS. Then open it and select Settings in the upper right corner. Change the OpenHab URL field to your Pi's IP address, followed by a colon and 8080. Exit the menu, and your phone should connect to OpenHab, bringing up your LED controller. Alternatively, you can also control the LEDs from any computer on the same network, including the Pi, by entering the Pi's IP address, followed by slash openhab.app, question mark, sitemap equals home. I know, a lot of you are probably thinking that there are a lot easier ways to control RGB LED strips wirelessly, but there's a reason we decided to do it this way. OpenHab is extremely versatile, and we've only just scratched the surface of the things you can do with it. You can control things with voice commands, monitor sensor networks, and even set up rules for automating devices from email or IFTE events. In future videos, we'll show you how to build other cool devices that connect to OpenHab and make your house even smarter. That's it for this time. 
We'll see you in the next weekend project. If you liked this video, subscribe to our channel or send us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to check out our other project videos or visit us on makezine.com.